presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment And yes, he does enlighten and inspire Hi, this is Alisa, Eric's mommy Hi, Eric, and we have Michelle Gray, of course, here Hello, Michelle yep. Stephanie couldn't make it She's a little under yeah. the weather But we'll, get, we'll catch her Hello. next time Yes, Eric says Eric says that he loves you, Mama, and Stephanie is going off on a beautiful vacation for some well-deserved R&R. So oh, God, she, she does. Oh, she deserves it. Good for her. Yes. I'm ready yes. for mine. Beauty bath yes. taking me away. Me right too. Now. Anyway, tonight, I think you guys, Michelle and Stephanie, thought of, this, thought of an awesome you know, topic for tonight. tonight. Uh, talking about dreams, I mean, what are they? I know there are different types. There's lucid dreams, and there's, oh my God, mine run from unloading the dishwasher to like my, my tongue has a coat and tie, and started giving exercise classes to me. I mean, weird stuff. Okay, <laughs> uh, what does it say about me? Anyway, so how can we better understand our dreams too? You know, I, I started doing a dream journal, but then I got lazy and stuck. And I, I understand that if you do it, then you can start to learn how to travel in lucid you know really be more conscious in lucid dreams and so yeah and why do we remember them why sometimes we don't why is it that when i wake up i remember so vividly and then five minutes later what so Mm -hmm. can we learn from them uh can we interact with the people in the dreams etc so eric will share you got the mic Mm -hmm. eric via michelle i love you baby he loves you too. He's so excited, and he says hi everybody. And he's got he's got the mic in front of him, and he's ready to talk. And he says that this is such a um, it really is a broad conversation. But he said the reason why we're talking about this tonight is he's speaking of the energy that we are all feeling, and in this next uh, chunk of time, so in the next twelve days or so, there's like a heightened energy. And he says many people. Specifically, you're listening to this, likely you're included in this. You've been having some dreams. You've been getting messages and dreams. And if you are one of those people that says, nope, not me, I'm not getting dreams, well, likely you're going to start getting it, especially after tonight. Um, so what he's Why saying is that? Is he says, well, he oh, says sorry. that we are, he says, okay, he says, mom, dreams are, um, they're currents of energy. And currents oh. of energy in our own mind, our consciousness. And he says it also connects us into other realms. And he says, so as we ascend and heal and change and grow, he says our consciousness also does sure our dreams between our, our mind and our connection to our higher self, our connection to the spirit world. And so as that is all growing and changing right now with a lot of um, fed up energy, a lot of people are mm-hmm. finding, he says, that they're having some really vivid dreams and they're opening up more. So um, he said mm-hmm. that it's a really good topic because he says it's going to speak to a lot of people tonight that are experiencing some of this stuff. And he says, and it's also important to understand that dreams aren't just this, um, <laughs> he calls it, it's not just this wackadoo thing that happens to you when you close your eyes at night <laughs> and you go to sleep. And you wake up in the morning and go, whoa, what was that? It goes, although I'm sure many of us have experienced that. But he says there's actually a lot that we can do with our dreams. And there's a lot that we can um, work with. And what's so interesting is he's showing me, like, when we think of divination, when we think of using tarot cards yeah. and we use all of these mm-hmm. different forms to connect with spirit, he's like, we have this natural system built within us. He's like, we have this well, natural let me, let me back up. ability. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me back up before you go too far, um, Eric, because yeah. I, I want to address something earlier. So the currents of electricity, is that how you guys, you know, because spirit can manipulate electricity to, like, give EVPs, to change, the, make sure a song comes on the radio that they that it sends a message to their loved one, et cetera. Is this how you guys – come to us in our dreams via lucid dreams by manipulating that current of energy or is it something different or in addition yeah he says yes um he says it's like that it's it's um because he says there is some manipulation he says we're all connected 
But you see, he says these currents of energy that are floating from the mind. So some of it's like programming mm-hmm. from the mind, but he says it's the uh, connection into the consciousness. And so he says, that's where we enter in. That's where we come into your field and then interact with you. So sometimes we're interacting with you. Um, so he says, okay, let's, let's talk about an example. So he says, so you're having a dream and you're being chased by this pink fluffy monster and there's a giant mouse, why ever he's showing me this, there's a giant mouse with teeth and legs that's running beside you. You're running a race. And he says, and then all of a sudden your aunt, who passed away a month ago, is running on the other side of this giant mouse. And you're like, oh, my gosh, that's my aunt. I really miss her. He says, what's happening in a situation like this? Because some people be like, okay, that was just too weird. That couldn't have been a visitation. A visitation is when I feel the love. I feel all this energy and be a visitation. Because what's happening is you may be having these energetic streams and uh, program pieces from your day-to-day life. He goes from what you have experienced or sometimes unprocessed emotions those types of things that are also like fear in that case. Yeah. With, yeah, with yeah. spirit. So he says that happens. Then of course you've got your um, spirit coming into your awareness. And he says in a situation like this, you are often in a deep sleep. He says there's some, um, he says it's not really manipulation, although there is some that we do because you have to be in a certain state of sleep for us to be able to help you remember your dream. So he says there's a lot of pieces to this. And he says, and not everybody, he says, and everybody dreams. So even if you're saying, I don't dream, you do. I know my, one of my kids says, I don't ever dream. I said, yeah, you do. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, definitely. He says it's like a, it's like an art. So he says it is, it's a natural art and there are, and he says, and we will go over this. We'll go over some tips of how we can help ourselves if we're not dreaming and we want to and all of that. But he says, but anyway, he says it's um, messages. Um, it's a expression of our physical experiences. He says we can get solutions in our dreams. Um, they can be <laughs> prophetic. And, of Ooh. course, this from the spirit world and he said in all of the above they can be all mixed together but he says mom do you know what the most important thing is if you want to have uh we'll say more control over your dreams or you want to understand them deeper he says do you know what the most important thing is i don't know maybe saying hey before you go to sleep i want to remember this dream or something like that yeah he says no. that that's important that that is important he says that's one of the tips it is but he says it's how is your sleep? How are mm. you caring for your sleep? Because he says if you're somebody who is not um, not so great with sleep, you're, you might have um, some trouble remembering your dreams. You might have oh, uh, I love difficulty sleep. with have. Well, he says yeah, and he says that you're a dreamer. <laughs> you're a dreamer. And he says I know. I sometimes I don't want to wake up because I'm like, oh wait, I need to finish my dream. I need to finish my dream. What happens? That's what he says to me. He goes, Michelle's like that, too. He's like, can't wait to get to sleep to see what's going to happen. Um, yeah. But he says, um, so when we talk about it being um, like energy or um, streams of energy, he says that um, it's like, um, he says it's like having um, these different aspects. So what he's showing me is he's actually showing me like it looks like a sun. He shows me a circle, which he's showing us on the top of our crown. And then he shows all these little Mm. pieces that go out to it. And he says, so, you know, if you're astral traveling or you're lucid dreaming, it's how you are with your with your own consciousness. And sometimes you stay closer to the body, uh, but he means closer to the mind closer to the physicality. Uh. He says some dreams and he says, so if you're, uh, possibly not remembering your dreams or you're, um, you're not getting deep sleep. He says you may be suffering from some PTSD. You may be oh. have like some trauma or something could be going on in your life. Um, he says, or there could be something in your life that um, is like a, 
something emotional that's not been processed. He says unprocessed emotion, unprocessed energies can affect Mm. the flow. And he says, think of it as when we're connecting with the spirit world. So he says, when you're conscious Mm -hmm. and you're awake and you're connecting with the spirit world, how do you open up your energy so that you have a clear flow? He says, well, if you're mindful and you're working on your awareness, on your healing, that helps your connection with spirit because he says it helps ah. the discernment. So think this has kind of the same idea. He says, but so what you do in your waking hours doesn't mean it's not still happening or your dreams rather. It doesn't mean it's not still happening, but when you're working on the self in your waking hours when you're working on the quality of sleep that you're getting you're going to have more quality over your dreams and that's going to lead into the ability to better understand them and to interact and work with them which is well okay so i can't remember it's it's either anika or arlene that says i never dream it's something one of the kids a grandkid or my daughter starts with an a um anika why he says is it anika yeah anika what is it from? Trauma? I guess. Maybe. Um, he said he does say that, but he also says um very connected to physicality. So oh yeah. Very, mm-hmm. um, so it's just where her focus is and it's not something that she's even concerned about. So oh, no, it's something not that she's thinking about like, oh, why do I not dream? Why do I not do this? Because he says she does, of course, but she doesn't remember it. And he also says ah. it's not necessarily important for her where she's at. And he says that's another thing, too. Oh, okay. Just because you're not remembering your dreams, it doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. It doesn't mean that there's something well, wrong you with can you. Can you still be learning from it? Your, your higher self, I guess? What's that? Sorry? I guess your higher self can still learn from your dreams, right? Oh, of I course. mean, on a subconscious he level, of yeah. Course. He says there's there's all kinds of experiences that are taking place, and he says, and don't forget, Pete, we are multidimensional. So yeah. there are um, other realities that are occurring, and just because this is the reality that we're focused in right now, because this is the reality that we're paying attention to, that doesn't mean that there's not other realities that are taking place that our awareness or consciousness is traveling uh, are you to. Tra- are he you, says, ooh, hmm. okay, wait, uh, before I forget, are you talking about, like, of course, we can, can we interact with our other lives, past and future? Yes, he says sometimes we can, yes. And um, can we also, if we have a parallel life, is that what you're talking about, a, a parallel reality? Yes. Uh, that's, yes. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Okay, got it. Okay. Think of think of how many times you've had a dream where you recognize somebody and it felt like it felt like somebody that you know, but they looked like someone different. Yeah. He says, you know those oh. dreams where you're like, I know that it felt like it was my husband, but when I looked at him, he didn't look like my husband. He looked like this other mm. guy, but I felt so familiar with them. Or any person in your <laughs> life, he says, that can be uh, visiting a different time and space and he says that can be diff- in a different reality and he says and you're not always remembering it because it's necessary although sometimes it can be but he says you can bring back lips and pieces because he says that part of coming back into physical reality is you're not getting that full memory he says again that can be uh-huh. something that you can work on that you can yeah. um you can practice with and uh, he says journaling is a really good way to do that because it mm-hmm. tends to tell us that if you if you yeah. journal every day and you write and he says it's important too if you're one that doesn't remember much or you forget easily and he says find your style there are some people that wake up and they don't remember anything until later on in the day and there's something in their day that triggers oh. the memory so yeah I've had both where I remember way. right away and then forget or when I, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, that's what it was. But so mm-hmm. why, is there a physiological reason why it just aids? Right before we brush our teeth, wait, what happened? Um, I think it's like the little neurons sort of float off away into the void and beyond. I don't know. Well, he says consciousness, your your awareness, your physical consciousness, your awareness is asleep. So he says mm. that rest, it's, it's at quiet. 
so what that does is that um, he says it's mm, that's true too. He says, how do you know that's not happening when you're awake, but you're not tuning into it? You're not oh. remembering it because there's too much going on. He says we're mm. continuously living in these multi-dimensional realities. Dream because our physicality is asleep because the mind is asleep. Yeah. So he says that so, this, that's not it's not really one or the other. Okay, so what uh, we're in the brain and also we're in our aura, the, our energy. Do you guys go to connect with us? Is it the pineal gland in the brain physically? Mm-hmm. Is it? I mean, uh, third. I mean, t- tell me both the physical and the the energetic meeting spot. He shows the pineal gland, and he shows up in the crown area just above, right in the crown okay. area, so right into the auric field. Oh, okay. All right, cool. He's showing me a great dive on egg. in. Looks like a big egg oh, around okay. the box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, also, I want to know if negative entities can enter into our dreams. I mean, they are sneaky bastards. They, I fight with them every single freaking day doing the work I do. It's just so aggravating. It's like block sabotage, cease and desist. You know, and it's just you said everything you're a warrior, I can't in the language. God, Ugh. you're a warrior. So, but yes, they can. They can. So he says. So that also um, would indicate what's going on in your waking life. Um, mm-hmm. Because it, I'm, it's. I've never a, had them come into my dreams, so you know, sorry. But maybe no, some and do. he says, and it's not. Sorry. It doesn't happen for everybody because he says the mind can also conjure up experiences that are um, the mind that's working out some fear, or yeah. is working out. You know, so it's not always an entity, but he says they can come into our dreams. Um, he says it depends on what the situation is because there's really not one reason why. Because so first of all, if it's happening. There's got to be mm-hmm. some sort of agreement within your contract that your higher self allows that to take place. So there's got ah. to be some sort of a purpose for that to be taking place, whether it's, and that's, he's, um, I've said this before, I, it wasn't that long ago I had said this, when my daughter was having dreams about this being in our laundry room that was like a clown, and he was really mm, scary. Ugh, clowns and are creepy. Having, one of like one after another three nights in a row and eventually mm. we went and to find out what this was it ended up being a young boy that needed to be crossed and he was coming oh, wow. forward as something to get her attention so oh. eric says there's so many different layers to why you could be experiencing something and so he says you That's know good. if you are experiencing something reoccurring he says first of all reoccurring tends to do with the mind so yeah. reoccurring oh. has something to do with what's going on in your life. And he says, so if you have reoccurring, pay attention to what that is. Pay attention to what well, that's interesting. coming because Michelle, mm-hmm. uh, my, other, my Michelle, my Michelle, mm-hmm. uh, my mm-hmm. second eldest daughter, when she was little, we used to have nightmares about sharks. And so we just practice every day. Okay, just close your eyes and imagine the shark all of a sudden has a tutu on. And it's a ballerina and you're dancing with mm-hmm. the shark and all that stuff. And she'd stop <laughs> <clears throat> she stopped having the, the dreams about mm-hmm. the nightmares. So the mm-hmm. negative entities can come, if they do come in through dreams, what does that mean? Do they come into your energy, your home? Is that like a doorway for them? Well, he says it, it depends on, you know, if you're, um, okay, so give me an example, Eric. So he says, um, let's say, for example, um, we have somebody that is maybe doing some spiritual work that their uh, vibration, maybe they're working in an area that um, uh, he says like a lower vibration, um, mm-hmm. working with energy that is uh, darker energy. So he says, let's okay. say you're not protecting yourself. Like you're playing with your energy during the daytime or you're into some activities during your daytime that is disempowering. So, um, oh. and he says, what do you mean by this without judgment is let's say there's depression going on or addiction going on or something in your lifetime that would create an opening or, or mm. you've given free will permission in something that you're doing and you're not protected. And he says, so oh. I have a way of coming in and manipulating. Um, he says, you can also pick 
beings up. You can uh, yeah. go to locations and pick beings up and without understanding if you're one that's very open energetically, they can mm. be connected into your auric field and they will communicate with you through dream state because often when you have a negative entity that is attached to you, they're interested in creating fear so they're working off that fear. And if the way they're getting your attention is through the dream state, to create that fear, Mm -hmm. then that's how they will enter. But Eric says, again, it's not something that happens without there being some sort of agreement to that. Yeah. Well, I've had them come in in to people's homes, my clients' homes, like in a trunk, you know. And so Mm -hmm. I have to change. Now I have this big part in the intent prayer. They cannot enter through water water and solids, a mix of the solids, a mix of love, blah, 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 and in objects merged with life form. It's just really long, God. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. still, they're sneaky bastards. We should have a session all about negative entities. Like, why do they exist? Where are they? That where where do they come from? What is it? That would be so that cool. That would be good. Um, all right, so why do some people dream in, I don't even know what I dream in, black and white and some in color? Hmm. Eric says it just depends. Like he says, um, there's different areas of your awareness and showing the pineal gland because that's where everything um, activates your screen where you see things in that center. So he says it depends oh. on what you're connected into um, the, uh, the uh, what would you call it? The level of your sleep state, uh, oh. where you're at in your sleep state. So, um, He says it's not just one thing. It has to do with the, what is it, the REM or the, the, um, he's showing me lab brainwaves, like data, all sorts, yeah. Right, Right. and and where your pineal gland, um, and he also says that sometimes it has to do with what your conscious memory may be. So, for example, if you're dreaming about somebody that you didn't meet but you've seen in pictures, so if you're dreaming of like a grandparent, or a family member and you've only seen them in black and white, that may be, if it's a visitation, they may come through that way because you oh, recognize okay. them or it's something to do with the brain and the way you remember them. So it helps create oh, structure. Okay. Experience. Very cool. All right. Mm-hmm. I'll let you take the mic, but uh, before we do um, go on to callers, I do want to talk about how can we get the most out of our dreams? How can we use them to our advantage and, and, and instead of just always just wondering about them or getting scared because of them, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can, you can talk about whatever you were going to talk about mm-hmm. first, if you like. Um, so first of all, he says, um, okay, the journaling, like you said, mom, what you're talking about with the journaling like mm-hmm. you said earlier, journal. Keep a, a little notepad and a, a pen or a pencil beside your bed when you wake up. Mm-hmm. He says, when you first wake up, um, hold still if you can. He says, I mm-hmm. know it's not always possible. Some people have got little kids and different things, so they have to jump out of bed mm-hmm. in the morning. But if you can, take a few moments. And he says, most of all, he says, your intention is an activator. It is with everything you do. So before oh. you go to bed at night, he says, ask for what it is that you want to know. He says, interact with your dreams. So he says, use it as a tool and speak just the way that you speak affirmations, just the way that you ask your higher self information. You speak to your guides. He says, speak to your guides, speak to your consciousness, speak to your higher self and say, you know, I'm having such and such an issue. I'd like to could you help me figure this out tonight. I'd like to wake mm-hmm. up knowing the answer to this. He says, ask for it. Wow. And if you don't succeed on the first try, he says, don't give up. He says, it's about Keep consistency. Trying. And it's yes, because he says, you may not believe it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. You may not think that this is really going to work. So he says, but how about you give yourself a chance and you continue to use that intention and eventually he says if you do that it will activate so he says really practice asking for what you need um don't give up and so he says and again so lay as still as you can when you wake up and he said write down whatever it is that you recall he says no matter how silly it is or how subtle you might just 
jot it down, jot it down in point form, but he says be consistent with it every day because what will happen is you'll begin to start to see patterns with your sleep. And he says one other yes. thing that yeah. is really interesting, and this is something that Eric taught me a long time ago, and it, and it really does work, is he said to me that with mediumship and when, you know, tuning into spirit and information, and we start to develop a, um, like a, a what well, I can't even speak tonight, like, like signs. Like if okay. I see a basket and it's full of fruit, I know that it's a picnic that somebody went on with a loved one. So there's certain symbols. Okay. That's the word I'm for thinking. Oh. Certain symbols yeah. that that you see. So when you're doing that in your waking hours and you're connecting with spirit and you see symbols, and when spirit knows that you recognize those symbols, you get them over and over again in different experiences so that you're oh. able to understand what it is that they're saying. You're able to understand more detail. And he says, so the same with your dreams, because he says, you're going to have symbols come up. It might be colors. It might be animals. It might be uh, anything that stands out to you is going to have a meaning. And he says, and yes, you can go and look it up. He goes, there's dream dictionaries. There's all kinds of things that many people oh, yeah. have dreams that, have the same types of things in it, but he says, always go with what you feel first. So if you do feel something and you, you know what it is, he says, go with that before you go with any definition. But he says, keep track of that stuff because that's how you interact. And then you can use those cool. symbols to decode your own dream. That is so cool. So, so I, I'm wondering if there's specific things you can use to enhance, enhance your life. Like, can you, like an athlete performing in, in the dreams, going over the muscle memory and all that kind of stuff. Or if you're, if yes. you're about to go into some negotiations, can you say, yes. hey, you know, higher self, spirits, et cetera, help me go through the negotiations in my dream, et cetera. Can you do that? Yes. Yes. And Eric says, think of the possibilities. You can go to school. You can do training. You can learn things. And he says, and you may not always consciously remember the whole process, but he says, mm. if you keep tra practicing at it, if you keep going forward with it, um, he says, like with um, astral and uh, astral traveling with lucid dreaming, he says that mm -hmm. you can often, uh, he showed me when you said with running, he actually showed envisioning on being on a track and going and working with your mind, with your focus, um, being able to practice in another realm in another way to strengthen your being and but he said cool I want to learn Krav Maga okay Krav Maga or however you pronounce it that's what I want to do I want to go in there and you just y'all just download that shit to my brain and I'm going to get up and be just a total badass when bad people come and try to hurt my kids I'm kidding well, he they said won't. he said you know think of how many things that we already do know, he says, the human being mind and how we operate is pretty amazing as it is. So think about when you put your intention to it and you start to really work oh, yeah. with it, what they're able to do. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So what about this person, This person, for example, that woke up, she sued the doctor, the surgeon, woke up speaking French or, or had a change in accent or whatever. Is that, uh, well, did she learn French uh, in her dreams or did she, was it a walk-in, I wonder, or what? Well, yeah, he said that, yes, um, he says in particular with that one, um, he's saying that what you're talking about is a, is a walk-in, and he says that that okay. can happen. He says there's different ways that can take place, but not always. He says sometimes it's connecting into, like when he was talking about other realms and connecting into other lifetimes. He says sometimes that's connecting into that lifetime and bringing part of that consciousness back with you, bringing part mm -hmm. of that into, into your reality. And he says there's a lot of little things like that that take place all the time with people. That is so cool. That's another mm -hmm. good subject is walk-ins, do a session on mm -hmm. walk-ins. That would be cool. Yeah. So yeah. many people, are, you'd be surprised. Yeah. It's just our walk-ins. I don't know how common it is. but All right, what else, Eric? Anything else you can tell us? Or do we take callers? Or There's so much to talk about. Let's take callers, Mom. He says he's ready. Okay, because we can save uh, for the session later if you want. 
on Zoom and via and then eventually YouTube. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take number one on the list. Who is five six one area code? Hi there. How you doing? Hi, Eliza. It's Martha. Hey, Martha. What's up, girl? Hey. You must have us on I feel so funny that you. <laughs> I know. I do. That's good. <laughs> good. Um, good. Yes. Um. I have a question. It's so funny that you're talking about dreams because I had a dream last night that was so bizarre and I can't make heads or tails out of it. So maybe Eric um, can help me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, so I was walking through through a plaza like in Europe with a co-worker, a male co-worker, and as we're walking, just talking during the day, a bunch of snakes came out. Um, and we were, like, walking on top of the snake. So he just picked me up like I weighed, like, a feather. And he was holding me up in the air so I wouldn't step on the snake. So what is that mm-hmm. about? Hmm. Eric said that um, – hi, Martha. <laughs> Eric says hi. hi. <laughs> he says hi. <laughs> um, he says actually – so just to get straight to make sure I heard it right, so I repeat it back correctly. You said your coworker, right? Because what he's showing me is he says that this one has to do with um, when he said prophetic. So sometimes it can be a Ooh. warning. Sometimes it can let you know um, something that's taking place. He says what this is, is it has to do with a trusted ally. So somebody that you trust at work and to look out for deception and to look out for from somebody or Wait, somebody. From- hmm? Oh, somebody she trusts is going to be have deception. No, it's that she's okay. being protected. She's being protected from something, oh. but that there oh. is, um, and it doesn't mean like because Eric says don't don't take it to the point where you feel like somebody's doing something against you. It's just to keep your eyes out and to look out for something that might not be authentic, something that might not. Um, might not come to you or you might hear it or know about a circumstance that involves more than one person that is not accurate in the way it's being shown to you. So is that rumor? Like Like, like gossip? Something to do with with work. Um, It's not all personal, but it does have to do with somebody, their personality is how he's saying it. Okay. All right, well, that's for okay. you to figure out now, Martha. Get back to us when you have all the answers. <laughs> I I will let you Thank know you. what happens. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. Martha. Till next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. How about somebody from the 210 area code? Hi there. How you doing? Hello. Hi. What's can, you hear me? can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, well, my name is Samantha, and lately I've been able to channel pretty good, but I started recently Ooh. experiencing something different. And what it is is right before I fall asleep, I start seeing uh, it's like if it it's like if it's a, I'm about to go into a dream, but it's like it looks like the colors are different from the way we see them here, like on earth. Like Mm -hmm. if I see a plant, it may be like a yellow or a green mixed together. And it kind of, it makes me feel like I'm hallucinating. So I wake up and I get scared. And a part of me thinks it's like I'm trying to channel something or I'm seeing something or I'm wondering if it's a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. What is that, Eric? I mean, you're not, in in other words, you're saying you're not totally unconscious, right? Yes, it's like it's right before I'm about to start dream dreaming. Stage. I got yes. you. Okay. Ooh, cool. Go for it, Eric. Uh, Eric says hi, Samantha, and he's going. He's going wink, wink, wink. Like he he thinks you're kind of cute, and he Aww. also says that he hangs out with you. So he's a, he's around <laughs> you. He says that you do channel, and he says expect to have more of these experiences. He says that it's your your pineal gland. He says it's like a decalcification, and your um, it's like your third eye. You're tuning into um, other reality. You are. Um, he says the colors are going to start to turn to. You're going to see faces. You're going to see. Um, you might some, sometimes see cartoons, or uh, you might see like situations occur. He says 
try to practice when it happens, just uh, taking some nice deep breaths and just observe it. Keep practicing observing. He said you're completely safe. There's absolutely no. So don't react, here. just observe, right? That's just, right. Just, re- he says, just don't it's react, just observe. Mm-hmm. He's okay. calling it um, hypnagogic state. He said to look that Ooh, up. Yes. Oh, that wow. is it. That's, that is it. By the so way, guys, we, it, hmm. that is, uh-huh. Eric will can decalcify people's pineal glands if you guys <laughs> ever need that. All you have to do is go to yeah. AtlantisScalar.com, which I'll put on the on this thing mm-hmm. uh, when I make it into a YouTube. All right, so that's cool. So this is all about decalcifying her pineal glands? Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's oh, opening God. right up. And he said that, Samantha, you're going to have this happen. Um, he says you're going to notice when you wake up in the nighttime that it's going to start uh-huh. to happen in the middle of the night. It might even happen sometimes early in the morning. So he said just observe hmm. it. He said that you might don't don't try to think too hard into it. He says just kind of flow with it. Just observe it. That's interesting. All right, that I would see. Uh huh. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just I was just going to say that's interesting that she said faces because I actually did see a face last night and it and he mm-hmm. kept saying my name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. it was it somebody yeah. in particular, Eric? No, I didn't know the man. It, it was a man that I didn't know, and he just kept saying, Samantha, okay. yeah. Samantha. This yes. is spirit guide. Yes, yeah, spirit guide. Oh, I knew awesome. it. Spirit yeah. guide. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, All right, Samantha. Awesome. Keep it posted, girl. <laughs> Have fun I with it. I will post you. Okay. Thank you. you bet. Okay. Yeah. I need a, a TNT for my pineal gland. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we got somebody from the five right here. Me, four seven zero area yeah. code. Hi there, how you doing? Are you there? I don't know. Four no. seven zero. Uh, well, I'll take it for like when I when I when I slept the uh, three days and I can't sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oopsie. Let's let's listen, listen in. <laughs> hey, four seven zero area code. Hi there. Uh-huh. I'm not kidding. Really? Yes. Hello. Happened, like, Hello. Anybody home? Four Hello? seven zero Eric, are you there? Hello? Four, Hello? Hi there, there you are. We were just listening, listening to your nice little conversation. Could not make heads nor tails of it, but we are here for you, girl. What can we do for you? What's your first name? Andrea. Andrea, hi Andrea. Andrea, hi Andrea. How are you? So I'm doing great. So, uh, have you got a question for Eric or Michelle? Well, I was, or both? yeah, I really, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, I was wondering, what I'm really wondering is, like, uh, the porthole work. Is it, like, crucial to get an, an experienced person to do it, or is there, like, uh, classes or, or lessons that one can take to do their family and you know yeah Eric you want to take that one the portal work for the portal work for the portal work well first of all Eric's just saying that um, and at least I don't know if you and Eric have talked about this because he said that eventually you will be teaching this to people oh, okay. to be able to do it um, but he says that it is important that you do have somebody working uh-huh. with portal work because he said that there's, um, especially when you are opening up portals, you are working with energy, with entities. And he says, that's my mom. He says it's a it's a process oh and it I'm took her you. a great deal of time. And he says, fine tuning, yes. fine tuning. So okay. it's, it's yeah. very, for you, very, he says you'd be better off having it done by her. Yeah. It's okay. So, okay. Yeah, well, that, uh, Eric and I can do it. We have this divine team that does it, and a bunch of Herkimer diamonds and a scalar energy field, which amplifies everything. But, but yes, oh my God, I'm the just Lord loving it. Amazing. I, I lost hair. I got sick. I'm mean, oh, these negative entities would just flow in. One guy bless learned how to do it on YouTube, and he, holy hell, rained down on his eight-year-old daughter. All these negative entities just flew in, and just, just, oh, just. It was awful for her, so we we cleaned that up. And I don't know if so you've ever been it, to the Atlantis Scalar site, but here's a really no. funny thing. If well, you yes, I have. The oh, yes. you'll see this. I have. I've read the whole thing. That that lady, 
Did you uh, yes. see that selfie the lady sent me? She's yes. like, please help me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Negative entity. And then she got seventy five because it opened up good portal. She got seventy five thousand dollars from some relative. You know, like two or three days afterwards. So, but yeah, you right. have to. I, I'm. You know, it, it. It. There's so many nuances. You have to have a very, very well crafted prayer of intent and protection. Mine is six pages long, only one of them, and I've got two others. The one that I named wow. pepperoni. <laughs> I, I just label so, it pepperoni yeah. because I don't want to read six pages every time, but I do have to from mm-hmm. time to time. And then one is cease and desist, one is block sabotage, and one is release, and they're all very long, very, very elaborate, and very specific. I even have where okay. please, uh, with great love, respect, and, and uh, gratitude, I ask the universe to not limit me by the restraints, constraints of their literal interpretation of the language. of the, I mean, every little detail, girl. Mm-hmm. But anyway, when I first started doing it, I would leave the bathtub after bathing, and it would be black scum. Oh, that is so amazing. Or I forget I could... to say, I would forget to say the prayer, my substitute for the protection prayer is apples. I don't know what it is about apples, pepperoni, whatever. Five <laughs> seconds. And that night, this awful shadow person was flying around my, I never heard of him. But red glowing eyes, black blob, uh-huh. and then I, I looked it up and it does exactly what they look, what this thing looked like. It was horrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. be careful. Be really careful. Well, I'm mm. not gonna. Mm-hmm. I, I'm scared to do it. I, I mean, I, I saw your prices and they're very reasonable. I feel. Yeah, so, yeah and it's also. Uh, yeah, I it think takes they're like reasonable. Five hours. I am not. Yeah, in I think that's girl. very reasonable. And, and because yeah. we don't and even know. Example, you don't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yesterday, for example, yeah, so- I did for free on everybody a special frequency set that fills in any mm-hmm. potential gaps in their energy work from the very first person I did it on all the way through. And I want to do that every three months for free. And then we also do yes. a retrograde integration, which is if I add any language to the prayers of intent and protection, I have it integrated mm-hmm. into everybody's energy work. From the from day one, and we do that every three right. months, completely free. So oh, cool. really, I sometimes I make minimum wage on this because I, you know it's it's about helping people and the right. transformation mm-hmm. is. Well, I think your I think your prices are reasonable. I love it. I mean, it's I, no. I, I, I feel like for the for what you I know I, I could just imagine the intensity of the of the frequencies and the vibrations that you go through during this process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's um, well, not easy, for, but I get to work with my boy. So, you know, yeah, that's, know. that's part of the thing I love. And, yeah, um, he's teaching but so anyway, much. Yeah. So it's we got a special, guys, a if you want to do it before the end of the year. Season's greeting yeah. 2020. Coupon code, 10% so, off. So, like, what I was going to ask is, like, like, what about what about doing, like, like three ha- different houses? Like, like my dot, my my daughters and my other daughters, and then mine. Like, could, could I could I call and we could talk about like getting a, like something like that. Well, actually, each household has to be separate because it just takes five okay. hours, sometimes right. up to ten hours okay. per house, and you can't do one. I've got to warn a lot of people here. Some people say, well, I nobody in my house wants to do it except for me. I would rather not mm-hmm. do it at all, because when we start working on that person. The negative entities fly to the other one of the other people or all of them, connect with them, oh and goodness. then it's right yeah. before we do that impenetrable shield that shields you forever yeah. for all eternity from negative yeah. entities and energies, they slip in. So it's all a waste, and it's a waste of a lot of brutal time that that you know oh, I man. have to go through also. So um, uh, man, I have yeah. I have compassion for you. Well, thank you for everything. Well, uh-huh. Everything you do. But I, I will tell you this. It. I really, really think that when y'all consider doing this, if you want to do it on other people, that's fine. But, they, or they, but if you do it for your family first, then you'll see the abundance coming in. And then it will mm-hmm. be easier to pay for to help other people if you want to help other people in your family. It's baby steps. Yes. You don't have to do everything at once. You don't. Yes. You know? Just take your time. Yes, it's just they're struggling spiritually so much that I feel like there's open bad open portholes around them. 
and and I see mm-hmm. it like I can feel the energy and I can see like the the struggle in in their in their daily lives. Eric, like, what do you want? Illness. What do you want to tell her? Yeah, let, let's let's ask Eric. I'm, I've been yeah, I can do much. No, Eric, wait, no, you're well, fine. Give me some guidance. Give Eric, me some Eric, guidance, baby. What he was do? just saying to me when you were talking there. Um, he was just saying to me, there's some depression that's going on with one of your daughters. Mm-hmm. Does your daughter have depression or chronic depression? Yes. Both, yes. Mm-hmm. We mm. both do, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Is exactly. that negative depression entity? was the first thing they said. Um, he said, yeah, that there are some. Um, he said that you would benefit from having it done first. It would definitely be better for you because he says you're the one that he is putting the intention out to wanting it done first, and you yes. will start to feel better so that you can better help them. So he says yeah, work, that work in that sense. way. Yeah. Will it help her yeah. with abundance for her also so she it's easier to help the other people? Yeah, he like, also the said um, that he's talking about um, – like he's actually showing me there's like bills or a pile of bills and there's something that will offset whatever bills you have, or I don't know how to explain if something's overdue because he's showing the bills reducing. So either you're going to have an increase Ooh. of income or there's going to be some change in your, in your bills or what you pay out of your house. Cause he's showing me like monthly something affecting mm-hmm. the month. Okay, in a I negative way or a positive way? No, in a positive it. way. Time and time again. again. Yeah. I, I've seen, yeah. I don't like the promise. You know, I, I hate I hate doing that. But I have seen it time and time yeah. again. Oh, guess what? I did your board of work and somebody gave me a free truck. It's a thousand dollars, but. Well, it's pretty yeah. amazing. Um, I've experienced yeah. it myself. It, it really is. It really is amazing. Yeah. 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 Anyway, well. Well, ladies, it's been a pleasure anyway. to talk to you, you both. Can. Yeah. Pleasure, and I want to help your daughters. I really do, and, and your whole family. So, yeah, and they don't have to know it's yeah, being but done because Eric checks in, gets permission from their higher selves, and I don't think they ever say no. So. Yeah, yeah. I just All want right, them to prosper so so much, and and, and yeah. be, have happy happy family unit. Yeah, you know that's just what a great mom. Can oh, what a great mom. He says that to have some contentment. Because there's been a lot yeah. of um, there's a lot of anxiety. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're gonna wow. change that. By God, I will do anything <laughs> to help you, girl. Well, you're a wonderful All right. woman. You're a wonderful. I listen to you, I mean, you know all what? the time, and you have I, a, I connect a, a you. Really I know you. Humor. You are an amazing mother. I can just tell, and mm-hmm. that's why. I feel I this yeah. connection right now, so that's cool. It's a very important job, you know. Very yes, important. it is. Yes. The most important. The most natural yes. uh, resource for our future. <laughs> sure children. is. Yeah. Yes, that's it is. Hallelujah, that's girl. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. All right, we'll talk later, darling. All right, doll. Take care. God bless. Well, bye-bye. Bye. 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 So I uh, hope she's maybe she's listening. Is that do you think the de- the negative entities are well she's not but she'll listen later are making their natural physiological depression worse or are they yeah most, he, he says he says it's it. it's um he says there's some there's some stuff going on situationally that's gone on for yeah. a period of time so he shows that it's like a build up mm-hmm. over a period of time but he says okay. that there are entities around there that um. He's just like walking around with um, like balls and chains hanged off your ankles. Oh, gosh. Your oh, my gosh. Oh. oh okay, yeah. we're going to go to somebody with the 414 area code. It's going to be so much fun to see that fam- those families transform. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. Hi, Hello. 414 area code. How you doing? Hi, Lisa. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Who's this? Aaron? Uh, this is Aaron from Arizona. I knew it. I guessed it. Can you believe it? Oh, my God. I'm running over the thing. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> What's up, Aaron? How are your well, abilities uh, growing? Uh, okay. Um, not much going on as far as uh, healing other people, but writing mm-hmm. music and uh, uh, recording music and stuff like that. Taking a new ch- – still haven't finished my book yet, but uh, the uh, – 
the question I have for you all is uh, a couple of months ago, um, my sister's brother-in-law passed away. And uh, I didn't get a chance to go to the funeral. Thank you. And Mm -hmm. uh, I I just wondered if, uh, if he had any messages for, you know, the immediate family that I could deliver. What's his first name? Christmas time. I'm sorry. His name is Jeffrey. 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 And this is Aaron. I don't know if you recognize Michelle. You probably talked to him before. I, yeah, I do recognize you, Aaron. How's it going? <laughs> good, good. How are you doing? Good, good. Okay, so I'm just getting Eric to help me out here. Did Did Jeffrey pass of something from the heart or in the chest area? Yes. It was fairly sudden. Yeah, it was a surprise. He's, uh, yeah. I think he was 55. Yeah, he doesn't you know? feel he doesn't feel very old, and it feels real quick because the the very first thing I'm getting is like he's commenting about um, how he didn't get the chance to say a goodbye. He didn't have that opportunity, and oh. so expressing his um, he says, "I'd rather say hello than goodbye." is what he's saying. Uh Um, He wants to let you know and to pass the message along that he's doing real well. Um, He's also got a cat with him. Is there anybody in your family that has lost a cat? It doesn't feel like his cat. It feels like I'm not sure. Yeah. feels like a female in your family, a cat that may have passed away mm, five to ten years ago around that lighter okay. colored cat. So for whatever reason, he's showing that cat just to, to give some peace that he's, he's taking care of things over here. Um, mm. hmm, let's see what else he's saying here. Um, has he got a son? Uh, no, not that I know of. I don't, I don't think he was, he was childless. Hmm. Maybe he does. Yeah. Some, well, he's, he's pointing out the male. There's a male that he was close to that he, it's like he had a a lot of affection for and um, feel like younger than him. A nephew? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a nephew, right. Because he's he's showing being around the family, but there's something about this nephew. I don't know if there's something going on with him because he's showing, um, he's saying like showing up for him being able to be there for him um, and whatever is going on or about to change in how old is the nephew? Um, I think he's might be in his late teens now. Okay. Cause there's some, um, he shows change and he shows there being some, um, some fear around the change and it's not all his fear. So it's, it's, fear of the parents or something it's like um mm. him wanting to take a step or something being offered and he's offering uh jeffrey is offering support with this just saying that it's going to be all right to let him okay. walk through it he's showing support to this um he's doing real well and um he's also showing a hat i don't know if he wore a hat or a ball cap but he's like pulling the hat down like moving it up and down tipping it at yeah okay Okay, I'll pass it all along to the family. All right. So he did say cool. his goodbyes in a way. That's good. Yeah. 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 So it could, could it, yeah. it could it doesn't have to be this nephew. It could be some other. We're saying nephew, but it could it be could, some yeah. other That's right. youngest boy. Yeah, that's you know, right. You just have to ask the family. It could be something. You don't have to know exactly what it is right now because often. When spirit comes through and says something like that, it's it's gonna mean if it doesn't mean something right now, it will, it will. So it's kind of uh-huh. like a heads up, but it's it's definitely a, a a younger man that he has. Um, he's looking at like a like he's guiding, like he would a son. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's a, a big. Could it be a spirit guide um, for that? A big family. Nah, he's just... All right. Well, Aaron, can, let us know if you find out anything next time you call. Okay. Yes, the cat yes, and the boy. Good. Thanks a lot. Yes, you bet. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Happy holidays. All right. Okay. You too. You. Happy holidays. Oh my gosh. Happy holidays. Oh, we'll talk later too. So, okay. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a quick one in. Here's seven eight six area code. Hi there. How you doing? 
Are you there? Hi there. Welcome to the show. Uh oh. Okay, we'll try. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, before we close off, just so I don't get too squeezed at the very last, please check out Michelle Gray. Obviously, you see how wonderful she is, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, her website is D Healing H E A L I N G H for hotel dash a r t dot com. And of course, I will put it at the end of this YouTube. And um, all right, so let's try one more. And also AtlantisScalar dot com. Check it out. A T L like the city, lost city of Atlantis. But then S C A L A R dot com. All right, we got seven oh seven area code on board and ready to fly. Hi, hi there. Hello. Hi. Hi. Do you got a oh, quick one? Gosh. We got like three minutes, probably less. But yes, first name. I do. This is Anastasia. Yeah. I'm 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 the selfie lady. Actually, I think I've become oh, okay. known Goody. as the selfie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I just I know that we've got a little bit of time, so I'm just wondering if if Eric has any messages for me. I'll leave it at that. I've got lots of questions, of course, but I'll just leave it at that because I know we're limited. What What's your first name? I just well, missed that. This is Anastasia. My first name is Anastasia. Anastasia. Yeah, there's. It feels pretty broad. If you can narrow it down to one, that'll help us. Um. Well, I'm well, she, still she struggling. Just wants with... a message, but yeah, ask a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead and ask a question. What's really eating at you the most? I'm. Well, one of the things on my mind is um, I had asked for my um, guardian angel's name, and it was interestingly, it was um, Anastasio. Anastasio. Anastasia. I know. Like, it was so similar to yeah. your name. What is that, yeah. Eric? Hmm. Eric is actually saying that, okay, and uh, how do we explain this? You carry angelic vibration. You're mm. of the angelic vibration. So there's a connection. Like It's like part of you, like your higher self. So Eric is saying, like, it's like looking into a mirror. So Ooh. the other thing is, too, is is your guardian angel, Eric says, doesn't necessarily hold a whole lot onto the name, meaning that um, your vibration seems to have a lot of effect on it. Like, sometimes a name will come through very clear, and sometimes a name will be, um, like, not really necessarily the most important thing as long as you have something to identify with, but this one okay. seems very connected to you. Like you're under the same dominion, like you're in the oh, same, wow. the, you're in the same, um, I don't know if anybody's ever told you that, but you have angelic vibration. You have um, also a healer you know, energy. Opposite, actually. But the healer energy, what? yes. I've been I've been told that I have healer energy. Wow. Yes. How, how is she an earth, earth angel? You. You're the Wait, earth is she an earth yes. angel? Yes. She's oh, an wow. Earth angel. There's only yes. 6,453 in the, uh, humans in the world that are. That's pretty cool. All right, we better yeah. close up. Oh. We better close up. And that is a really good note to end up on, Anastasia. Yeah, thank good you. Job. Thank All you, right. ladies. All right, thank you, guys. You're welcome. And, and Eric, everybody, join us. Bye. Bye. But I love you, Eric. Join us for the next show, guys, you, um, so I can wish you guys a happy holiday. Thank you, Eric. Bye. I love you. Thank you, Michelle. I love you. Thank you to everybody out there. I love you very much. And take care. Love Be you. Safe. Eric loves you guys all, too. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Bye.